nothing wrong in paying for self-improvement, having an education fund like Tony. Actually, I would recommend you have that because when an opportunity comes that there's a really, really good webinar that you can enroll in or a really good coach or mentor that you can get, might be life-changing. Question, how much is too much to pay for self-improvement? What are the factors to consider before enrolling in a high ticket course or hiring a mentor or coach? Interesting. Okay. Ako kasi, I have, well, in my experience, I've never paid for a coach or a mentor. I never hired one. Um, although I do know that there are people who, who accept mentees and then there's like a fee in exchange. But I actually allocate a portion of my income to my education fund. So so fund na yon, um, I know that, like, for example, if I come across a seminar, a, a paid talk or a course that I want to be a part of, then I just tap into that fund because yung pera na yan, alam ko na nakalaan talaga siya for that purpose. So it's it's a bucket that I replenish every month so that if in case I come across, ayun nga, like uh, a mentor that I want to hire or a course, I can just tap into that fund. So I guess it really depends on how much of your income you're willing to budget for that. But in your case, ikaw, since you are a mentor to a million already, so no. what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Actually, it's funny because people, a lot of people ask if I can mentor them, but I have rules if you want me to mentor you. I, it's not a lot. It's just three rules. Number one, uh, what did you do about what we talked about? If we had the session already, what did you do about it? Because if you don't didn't do anything about it, then don't ask me to be your mentor. We can be friends, but not a mentor-mentee relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Number two would be ask me quest ask me your questions. So before we meet, I require you to have a list of 10, 20 questions or you know, five questions, whatever it is you want to learn, and that's it. And number three would be when do you plan to apply all of these things? So it could be like questions first, when do you Want, when do you plan to apply? And then sa next meeting natin, okay, what did you do? Ganun, ganun lang. It's actually quite simple how I mentor people. But if that isn't followed, then we shouldn't be mentor mentee. And then mm -hmm. I also don't book you. Usually as the mentee, you book the mentor. You ask for the time. And when I before, before the pandemic, when I asked people for their time to mentor me in a certain area that I want to grow into, for example, I, I vividly remember asking uh, David Bonifacio of, um, he, he works with the Coffee Bean Group. I asked him, why did you sell your company to them and became part of their board? Because you could have done it your own way. You know, you could have have, you could have just uh, bootstrapped because you had the bootstrap money. And I learned about stocks and shares and his decision and how, uh, on, on why he did that. And if he could do it all over again, what he would do differently. I learned a lot actually in that one hour mentorship. I told him just one hour, I'll buy you lunch. Let's meet. I'll go to you in your office. And he said, yes, didn't cost me anything. A couple of months ago, I hit the president of Sante Barley, Mr. Uh, Joey Marcello. And I had two, two mentorship meetings with him already. I asked him, how do you do your performance bonuses? Very big deal for me because I want to give perform performance bonus to my people. But I had no idea how to compute it. I was missing so many parts of the equation. Na I don't know how to piece it together. Paano nga ba? Paano nga ba ang bibigay perform performance bonus? Paano ba compute yun? I'm an idiot when it comes to that. I asked him. I learned it from him. Really good stuff. He was gracious enough to even give me an hour and a half of his time in one session. That was really good. And then this year, we're planning to professionalize. So it's the first time we're considering hiring an executive, you know, an AVP, an assistant vice president to join the team. And I had no idea. Again, I'm an idiot when it comes to that. So I hit up the, the president of Ayalaland International. Miss Anna Tatlongharin, wow. I asked her, hey, can you, can you give me one hour of your time? And she's like, of course. She's awesome. a game, man. Yeah. I, I, spoke, I spoke at their event like three, four years ago. And she's game and I learned a lot. And right now, we're trying to figure out how we're going to meld that in SEO Hacker. And guys, here's the thing. I didn't pay anything for any of that. I didn't pay anything. 
But I love these people. They know if I could pay them, I would, but they didn't ask for my money. And this, this is because these are people who also love helping other people. Now, nothing wrong in paying for self-improvement, having an education fund like Tony. Actually, I would recommend you have that because when an opportunity comes that there's a really, really good webinar that you can enroll in or a really good coach or mentor that you can get, might be life-changing. But do your research first. Okay ba talaga tong tao na to? Does he or she have a heart really to help people or namimera lang? Kasi may mga ganun, maraming gurus na medyo con artist, no? So there's a lot. I'm not gonna name any. I'm just gonna tell you, do your research. Yeah, mm-hmm. Maybe you're wondering, eh, Sean, you paid for your John Maxwell certification. That's also a lot of money. Yes, I did. And what I wanted there was the content. And dami nilang kwento. And now I can use all of the content for my talks. The certification is nice, you know, saying that I'm a John Maxwell certified uh, coach and speaker. That's nice. But the content, me incorporating that in my talks, it's what's really important for me. Because I'm learning it. I'm listening to his stuff. I've read a lot of his books. I've been a fan since I was 13. And I'm still learning today. And um, that stuff, if I can put it in my webinars and in, in my, my leadership stack lives, that's that's gold. I, I bought something that's a lot more valuable for me. It's actually go. speaking of certifications and webinars, like what you said earlier, um, there's this masterclass for financial advisors by Randall Tiongson. And uh, I, I saw the list of speakers, Nandun si Marvin Guillermo, Rex Mendoza, Dr. Alvin Ang. And like as soon as I saw the enrol- the, the enrollment phase was out, I was like, take my money, right? Because it's, of course, it's, you're going to get your money's worth if, Sino pa ba, ba? And I guess in your case, it's true na you don't need to pay for a mentor because usually the mentors that I, you know, ask help from, they're quite big, ba? I don't know, sila, big names in the industry. So they have all the money that you could ever imagine. So I guess look, like what you've said, a lot of them are willing to help people. It's just that you have to also take the courage to step out and reach out to them. All right. So hope we answered that question. Can I teach myself how to trade and rely on free content and communities online? What are the benefits of enrolling in a trading academy? I have never enrolled in one. How about you? I have not, but I know a few content creators who who started out by just watching YouTube videos, reading books, but eventually when they started growing their community, they had to take courses. They had to join trading academies because uh, building your credibility is part of it also. And, you know, I learned this from my client who's also a fitness coach. I think he's also tuned in. And he talked about how um, he does most of his sessions th- via Zoom. And bakit di na lang mag YouTube, diba? Like, sure, you can watch workout videos on YouTube, but when you have a a coach or if you have a mentor in, in let's say, a community, then there's also that, you also get the accountability factor. And at the same time, at least the way you learn will be personalized based on your pacing, the bam. I mean, yeah, sure, you can you can do it yourself, but at the same time, it will be difficult to track your progress. Diba? If you have any inquiries or questions, you just have you have Google as your friend. But yun, yeah, for me, I, I would say you can start with that. And then if you feel confident or if you research about the trading academy, you saw the reviews, it's worth it, naman, then I'd say it. You should. You should try it out, Deba. I have I remember I've been to one uh trading course workshop. That's Marvin mm-hmm. Germo's Stock Smart. Stock workshop. Smarts. Yeah. <laughs> highly recommended. Highly recommend. Everything I know about stock trading came from Marvin Germo and, and the books. But it's titled Buffettology, written mm-hmm. by his ex daughter in law, mm-hmm. something like that. That's a really good book as well. Yeah. And on top of that, you can also check out Trading Like a Stock Market Wizard by Mark Miniveri. I hope I pronounced that right. So that's like Bible for traders. Everything that you want to know about chart patterns, about trading, you'll find it in that book. So normally you start with that and then you can explore uh, trading courses that are paid. All right. How do I build my team, expand my brand, and connect with more people? Are you uh, are you building your team now, Tony? Yes, so I have around 25, um, some that are yet to be coded. And yeah, I would love to hear that advice from you. I'm sure I'd learn a lot. Build my team. First off, one of my biggest mistakes is I didn't take time to screen them when I was hiring. So I hired because I needed people. 
that's a really bad reason for hiring. You should hire before you need a position filled because the screening time should be enough for you to get to really know the person. There's a lot of ways to hire. I recently recorded a guest in the Leadership Stack podcast on Spotify. His name is Dancho Dimkov, and he's from Macedonia. And he's like, oh, when we hire, we just get like the four or five applicants and we get them all and we give them a project and we check who's going to be fit in our culture. And then we just get those who are a good fit and we get rid of the others. So I'm not saying that there's a one holy grail way to hire, but it would really depend on what you need and what your company is like. I can't do it the way he does because we have big accounts. We can't like give account A, which is a very, very big mall here in the Philippines, to this account manager and then, oh, hindi pala siya fit, palitan natin. Of course, it's going to piss the client off and we don't want that to happen. We might lose the account. So in our case, we really take our time screening people. I guess when you're building a team, you want people who have a certain calling deep inside them. Right. Um, may, may mga ibang tao, you, you ask them, what are you doing? Oh, I'm laying bricks on top of each other. And then there are some people, you ask them, what are you doing? And they'd say, oh, I'm building a, a cathedral. And then there are some people, you ask them, what are you doing? Oh, I'm building the house of God. I want to hire the, that last person, not the first one. Now. Oh, I'm just laying bricks on top of one another. And so often we hire that first person who's just laying bricks on top of one another. Ganun lang tingin niya sa trabaho niya. Because we don't take the time to screen them. So for me, the first the first step is take the time in hiring people. Um, expanding your brand is all about consistency. So with SEO Hacker, our branding is all about um, quality and extra mile service. And of course, we rank number one or uh, first page for a lot of keywords in my industry. We dominate it. We have so many clients in the Philippines that are really, really good brands, big companies, and we made them rank number one or first page. And we have proven ourselves time and again. So if you if you think about SEO, it's SEO Hacker here in the Philippines, at least. We're number one here in the country. And you're consistent with that. You know, you don't change your positioning biglana. We're number one, not just in SEO, but in traditional marketing as well. No, we we don't do that. We're just say, we just say when it comes to SEO, we're number one. We, we don't even say we're the best in social media marketing. We're just saying when it comes to SEO, we're number one. That's it. So be consistent with your branding. A lot of lessons as well with Nike and Adidas. Nike has been the same. It's the Czech logo. Just do it has always been the tagline with Adidas. I like their tagline, impossible is nothing. But after that, they changed it. I think the year after, they're not so consistent with that. And so I, I don't even know what their tagline is right now, right? So good branding, be consistent. Connecting with people is all about humility. For me, it's all about humility. Because a lot of people don't try to connect with another person because they feel like it's beneath them. So when you feel like connecting with people is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you and you can't lead. Leadership is beyond you and you will not be able to lead when you cannot connect with people. So it's about being humble, knowing who you are and knowing na yun sabi nga namin ni Tony kanina tao lang din tao lang din tayo diba? whatever success we have been able to get through at the end of the day we're just another human being trying to help out another human being and trying to make our way in the world diba? so be humble and you'll be able to connect with everyone I'd say you know everyone no secret to that there's no secret to that those are my tips hopefully that helps at that it's 9 p.m. That's all the time we have tonight. Maybe next time we have Tony, we could go a little bit over time again at 10 p.m. But tonight's a busy sure. night. And we love that you guys are here. Hope you learned a lot tonight. I, I know I did from Tony. Tony, thank you so much for being in here and joining me again tonight. Of course. Thank you again for having me. Again, if you have any insights that you'd like to share, go share this live show or post on post your learnings on your social media platforms. Again, the, the links are in the description box. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We are Leadership Stack Live every 8 p.m. Thursdays, and I will see you guys next week. Take care. Oh, hey, and since you're here, can you do me a favor? 
can you hit on the subscribe button and hit the bell button and select all notifications so that whenever we have a new video, you're gonna be the first one to know. Until then, keep leading. It's business and in life, right? And so, you know, what we learned about complacency is that number one, the more successful you are, right? The more vulnerable you are to complacency, right? So you look at people, you look at businesses, you look at relationships, and, and that was that was light bulb number one. I was thinking to myself, man, how many times do we say, how could they have fallen so far so fast, right? 